I remember my mom calling my name and it was behind me. And there was my mom standing there in this, these blue jeans and white shirt. My mom is white, so she had this pale white skin and really dark long hair that kind of went down to her mid back. I just remember her crying. And I don't know, you know why she's crying at the time, but I remember her crying and standing next to this strange woman. And as I got closer to her, she had grabbed my right hand and she leaned down, gave me a kiss on my forehead. And I remember just her eyes like looking at me kind of, you know, watered and then she handed my hand to this strange woman. The woman grabs my hand and she kind of pulls me and starts like walking me away from my mom. She puts me in the front seat and she reaches over and buckles me in and I remember like looking back at my mom who hadn't moved and she's still crying and just kind of standing there. And out of nowhere as I'm, I'm watching my mom I just remember hearing the sounds of crying. And then I turn to my left, look in the back seat, and there are my three siblings. She, you know, started the car up, and I look at my mom, we backed out, and we drove off. My first memory is like, the people that I loved the most, that I thought loved me, giving me away. And then what's worse is I feel like the next homes, some of the people, man, just really heinous people. Like just, I don't know, looking back on the things they did to me, it's like, how could a human do, like, do that to somebody else they're supposedly taking care of? One home, I was put in a chicken coop and was forced to chase chickens inside this chicken coop. And if I caught a chicken, I get to eat a meal. And like, you can kind of picture the people laughing, like cackling, standing at the edge of this little, like, you know, the, the chicken wire fence, just laughing at this little kid trying to chase a chicken. And they wouldn't feed me. I would have to sneak out of my bedroom. I would have to get into the kitchen, hop on a counter, and try and sneak food. And if I got caught, they would beat me. In the last house I was in, before I got to my home that's been mine ever since, the family was just, a very twisted family is the best way to explain it. We had a bunch of neighborhood kids outside. There was one time he brought me out to the front of the house, he sat me on the curb, he pressed on my shoulders, and he grabbed my head, and he forced me to lick the bottom of all the kids' shoes. And I remember like licking him until I had to be clean, and like like the bleeding of the tongue because there's rocks, and like kids were making messes. I just, I remember the line of kids. And so like this, this for me is that feeling of like, it's a very worthless human feeling. Mom doesn't want me around. These people that are taking care of me aren't taking care of me. That's the hard part about it all is, is I'm so used to getting tortured and hit and beat by this time. This seems like normal life. In foster care, nobody realized this, but like you don't go to a one foster home and you stay there forever. You will literally all of a sudden wake up one day, they'll put your clothes in a car and they'll drive you somewhere else. We got in the car, we drove around, we drove up to the house. There was some sense of peace in this car because the house I'd left, like I'm out of crazy, I don't want to go back to it. I have no idea what's coming. I have no idea what I'm entering into. But when I got there, like they cried. Because they were like, look at this little kid that definitely wasn't taken care of. And it's just like this little, you know, beat up kid. When I first got to the house, she wasn't mean. Like she actually, she loved on me. I was, at that time, I remember, consciously aware of trying to be as bad as I could so that they would send me back to my real mom still. I believe I broke like two or three lamps the first week in the house. I acted out all the time. I was only allowed at kindergarten for 30 minutes, because if I got there, like I was, I was a tornado and I caused problems for other kids, so they kicked me out of kindergarten like very quickly. Honestly, I don't know how she handled me. When you're in foster care, all you want to do is go back to the family. Whether they're good or bad people, I just want to go back to mom. So I believe everything she says, and she knows it, so she's manipulating it. She'd call me and tell me, hey, I'm gonna, you know, this is what's going on, what's going on. I was like, oh, it's okay, mom, I totally understand, right? Because I want to forgive her, and I want her, to, I want her to love me and to take me home. And then there was always, without fail, this, at the end of it, she would say, okay, pack a bag, wait by the window, at eight o'clock, I'm gonna come pick you up. Every time, I'd pack a bag, I would sit by the window, as a car drive by, you see the lights and the heart starts beating like it's the car, it's the car, and then it would just pass by and it would happen over and over. And after a while, you realize like she's not coming. 10 o'clock hits like she's not coming. And so I would always cry myself to sleep and, and then without fail, man, I could not stop it. We, would, we tried everything we could, but I would always wet the bed that night. One of the nights when I was, I think it was like 13 or something, I wet the bed and I woke up. And like she, she had this care about her where I could like see in her eyes like she felt for me. And this whole time like I, I knew she was there, they're taking care of me, but then like I really wanted to be my mom and it might have been like, maybe it was like the last straw of my mom doing what she did that was like, I'm done with this and I opened my heart for something else. 
But I remember she was just there, and it was like this warmth, like this person I've been trying to be crazy to, like she just isn't giving up. And she's here when the other person I want to love me won't come back. Like she didn't have to keep me past the first week, she had to keep me past the first year, let alone eight, and then up to this time, like she did not have to do it. She could have easily called and said, get, get this kid out of here. The first time I really felt like, man, someone really loves me and this is what it feels like. But at 14, when I finally got adopted, I did get to play football. And I just remember being very bad at the game. I'm not as fast, I'm not as strong, I'm not as skilled. I wanted to feel accepted, you know, and I didn't have the support of like the teammates and everything because I was this kid that sucked in the team and a sucky kid doesn't get as much love, which is beyond us, you know, so unfortunately at the same time at 14, my adoptive mom gets diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. It had really shook me. She did the work she did so I could go do great things. I remember standing up and looking in the same exact mirror that I, you know, brushed my hair in every morning. And I, I quite literally just looked dead in my pupils and said, you're going to be great.